Andrew Stanley is working on haptic devices that you can reach out and feel. They form a kind of digital clay that change both their shape and also their mechanical properties to take on the effectiveness of different types of objects. So the main part here is the silicone membrane and it's a pretty thin layer here and it has all these individual pockets inside of it that we've actually filled with coffee grounds. Um, so it's using this technology called particle jamming where Normally when you have a flexible membrane filled with a granular material, it's very soft and pliable. Uh, but if we pull the, the air out of it with a vacuum, um, it'll jam the particles together and they'll become more rigid um, as, as they become kind of denser inside of each of these cells. So we have 12 cells in this array and each one we can individually control the vacuum level to make it soft or rigid. Um, then we lay this whole silicon membrane on top of an air chamber here. So right now the pressure will kind of slowly increment in small levels. And then you can see some of the cells have already been jammed rigid and they actually become darker when you vacuum them as they become denser. And underneath it we can basically adjust the pressure of the air so that the whole thing will kind of balloon up with the pressure underneath it. And then by controlling which cells are soft and which cells are rigid when we increase the air pressure, uh, the soft cells will balloon up and the, the rigid cells will hold their shape. Um, so you can kind of think of this as like pixels in a very coarse tactile image uh, where the more cells you have and the smaller you can make them, the wider variety of shapes you can create while still controlling the mechanical properties of each cell. And so you can see some of the cells are still soft, whereas other ones are rigid and kind of hold the shape that they were vacuumed in. It's hard to tell from a 12 cell array, but it actually started as kind of a 3D model of a pair that I had. <laughs> With 12 cells, it doesn't look very much like the actual object, but to actually make it look like the object that you're trying to recreate, we're actually working on a 100 cell array right now. We can create these artificial objects that can be combined with training scenarios or virtual environments, such that that object becomes a changing haptic interface to a remote or virtual world.